All right, we are live and welcome, welcome, welcome to an episode here of Tip Tuesday Live. And I'm so, so delighted. I've got a special guest and I'm going to introduce her here in just a second. But I just want to call out the different audiences that we've got going on today. Um, again, if you don't know me, my name is Dana Hagstrom and my husband, David, and I, we help um, second career Christian coaches to get started online and to have momentum in their business. And we're coming live here in our Facebook group on David's and my Facebook page, and also on our YouTube channel, Ask David and Dana. So wherever you're listening in on the replay or live, we are glad to have you. So without further ado, I would love to introduce this beautiful woman that I have with me here tonight. Uh, this is my friend Jacqueline Grant, and she is a powerhouse, you guys. You know, we have been talking recently about LinkedIn. We had a LinkedIn challenge. We've been, you know, talking about different cool things about LinkedIn. But this lady, she is the LinkedIn lady. And so she is also the founder and director of the Management Academy and its subsidiaries, the Build Your Consulting Business Now Summit. And I'll be speaking on that later this year and the host of the LinkedIn live show called The Difference Makers. And that airs every week. And I will be um, later this week on your show, Jacqueline. I'm so excited. And she's the creator of the LinkedIn client formula. And like I said, known as the LinkedIn client lady. And she is coming to Genius on how to get clients, change those, you know, folks from, you know, just connections to clients. And then, of course, how how you use your passion to do that. And um, so I'm just going to turn this over to you. You've got some great words of wisdom, and I know you've got a special gift for everybody who's who's staying on to the end as well. So Jacqueline, take it away. Well, first, let me thank you so very much for such a warm and wonderful welcome, Dana. Thank you also to David, wherever he may be. Thank you to both of you because you've brought together such a wonderful faith-based audience, and I'm just so honored to be here with you. I really appreciate the opportunity to share with your audience a little bit of my journey, a little bit of my story, and how LinkedIn has played a tremendous part of that. Let me just share with you that I took my business totally online in 2017, and I came across an issue that I didn't really think about ahead of time. I was definitely a networker. I love to go to networking events and meet people, and one of the key things that distinguished me from everyone else that they met is that I actually followed up with them. I actually followed up with them after I met them and had a little conversation and maybe had their business card. But always the question was, are you on LinkedIn? And of course, I would follow up with them on LinkedIn. But when I went totally online, and the purpose in doing that, just so you have the backstory, the purpose why I did that is to be able to serve a larger, broader audience beyond my physical location. So 2017, I go online. And I say, well, how am I now going to get business? How am I going to meet people and be able to follow up with them my usual way? And so my strategies that I had been using, I had to bring them to a new level. And I developed certain strategies in essence to transition an online experience, or sorry, uh, an in-person experience into an online experience that was fairly much the same giving the same experience, the same responses, and the same interactions online as what I had done in person. But here now, fast forward to 2020 and 2021 and pandemic and so forth, everyone else faced what I faced in 2017, how to gain new business and meet new people online. And this is the real focus of it is building business relationships online. It's more than just connecting. It's more than just having a big number next to your name. But how do you actually develop those relationships, especially when you have never met in person? You've never had that initial point of contact. And I had already been doing that since 2017. So I was able to help a lot of people through this very challenging time of business development during a pandemic. 
and how to build business, how to gain new clients, focused, targeted, ideal clients when you've never met in person. And the other key portion of that is the fact that the larger the dollar amount of your product or service, the more you need to be on LinkedIn because that's where the decision makers are. That's where the business owners are. That's where the department heads, the directors, the senior VPs, all of them are on LinkedIn. That's not to say that they're not on Facebook. That's not to say that they're not on the other social media platforms, but where they're making their decision is on LinkedIn. They're going to check you out on LinkedIn to see if what they believe about you is so. Who else believes in you and what they have had to say about you? And is your persona consistent across all the other platforms where they will also check you out, but they will make their decision based on what they see on LinkedIn. So why is LinkedIn so important? Again, that's where the decision makers are. And I work a lot with uh, hiring managers and recruiters from another component of my business where I do business management and professional development certification training. And they say, not me, they say, if you're not on LinkedIn, you don't exist. Why? Because when a position is open and needing to be filled, there are hundreds of people applying for that one position. And how do they sift through and get to the best candidates? It's through their research on LinkedIn. And if you're not there, they move on to the next candidate. Wow. So their words, not mine. If you're not on LinkedIn, you don't exist. And likewise, probably the people that you are looking to connect with, the key decision makers, the business owners, the key executives and senior C-suite people, they probably think the same thing. If you're not on LinkedIn, why should they do business with you? So my, my first tip of today's Tip Tuesday is to put yourself in the shoes of your ideal client and what are they looking for when they are determining who to choose for their next major purchase. Why should they choose you? And are they seeing what they need to see to make a difference and to make the decision to hire you versus someone else? It's not just about what you want on your page or what you think is pretty or what you think is nice or what you think is important. It has to be what they think is important. So that's one key perspective that I necessarily had to change and that I encourage others to change as well. But today, the overarching theme is about turning those connections you may already have into clients with power and passion. So let's start at the very center of everything, your passion. That's probably the thing that's in your spirit, in your gut, in your soul, in your heart, wherever that is for you. Different people feel it in different places, but wherever that is for you, it's that thing that comes alive when you think about it, when you see it, when you see someone else doing it. That's that thing that stirs within you. And it could feel good, or sometimes it could feel very uncomfortable. If your passion is very big, it can sometimes be uncomfortable, but that's not a bad thing. That can actually be a good thing because if it's too easy, then you might think you could do it all by yourself. And we know that's not, <laughs> that's not possible. And so when you rely on that spirit, that feeling, and let it guide you and really listen to it and tune into it, it will guide you and it will show you the way that you need to go when you're in that decision-making mode and should I go this way or should I go the other way? Ask yourself, but it doesn't happen overnight. You do have to take the time to get to know how the spirit works within you and what those feelings are because we're we're inundated with such distractions all day long every day it's hard sometimes to know what feeling is what and so when you take that quiet time and you get into a rhythm of doing that on a daily basis you'll get in tune with how the spirit speaks to you and when you know and you know and you know then 
You won't question when you need an answer and you get the answer, you'll know that it is the right direction. So I say all of this to say that that's exactly what I do. I know the feelings that I get when it's a yes, when I ask a question, and I know the feelings I get when it's a no. I still have to make sure and ask before I ask the question, I asked for thy will, not my will. Because it's very easy to think you hear what you want to hear or see what you want to see and you want to always position, or at least I want to position myself to be in his will, not my own will. And we can always convince ourselves of whatever we want if we tried hard enough. So when I first ask for his will to be done or to be in his will, what I actually really ask is for my mind to be his mind and his will to be my will. So whatever I believe I'm being told is what I am being told from God, not my own judgment. So when you know what you're passionate about, then it gives you focus and it gives you direction. And it also will likely give you a drive that hunger, being tired, doesn't affect you. It will drive you no matter what. Here's a case in point. The number two point I'd like to share with you is the surefire way to identify that purpose. And how I identified one of my purposes is that years ago in my church, my church started to have a dance ministry. And they only danced once a month. So everyone would always look forward to, is this the week? Is this the week when they're going to dance? And this particular week, they did a dance to a song. I shouldn't say dance because we don't call it dancing, we call it ministry. So they ministered a song along with the choir, of course. And I was just in such awe because they spoke so much so emotionally, so distinctly, so clearly, with such passion, and they never said a word. It's all within the body language and clearly using the movement to convey the words that the choir was singing. I was so moved. I said, I want to do that. I have to do that. I, it brought me to tears. I said, I have to do that. And I investigated, how, how do you become a part of this? How do you become a part of the dance ministry? And I found out that they had just had auditions maybe a week or two before. And they only have auditions once a year. Once a year. Once a year. And so I had to wait. And during that time, every time they danced, I just was in awe. And I watched every movement and every hand gesture and everything, everything I watched with Clarity. And when that year came around, I auditioned. And I was accepted into the dance ministry and I danced with, the da with that particular dance ministry for two and a half years. But what it told me and what it showed me and what I'm here to share with you is that if that thing, whatever that thing is for you, never goes away, always how to identify your passion is the fact that it's still brings that leap of joy within you every time you encounter it, every time you think about it, every time you see it. And especially when you see someone else doing what you want to do, that's how you know your passion. So how do you now earn in your passion? That's one of the things that was very important to me when I started my business is to be able to help people identify their natural gifts, talents, and abilities and earn a living in it. Now, some may say, well, oh, I just want to be of service. I just want to help people. But if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. And even in the Bible with Joseph, Joseph was told that a famine was coming. And God told him to sell the grain to the people, not give the grain to the people, but to sell the grain. Why? Because they needed to have a stake in the whole situation. 
they had to see it as valuable. If they were just given the grain, they may not have seen it as valuable. They may have taken it for granted. So they had to have some, quote, skin in the game. Doesn't mean that everyone necessarily paid the same amount, but they paid whatever they could afford. And so when I hear someone saying, well, I don't want to charge a lot and I, I just want to serve people. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But how will you serve if you cannot have a roof over your head or take care of your family? So when you can use your gifts and talents and abilities, the things that come naturally to you, that come so easy to you, the things that you could do for free because you just enjoy doing it, that's your gift. That's your gift. And a gift is really not gift until it is given. If you have a gift and you keep it, it might be nice, but it doesn't have the same passion as when you give it and you see the enjoyment of the person who receives your gift. And the, the equivalent to that is, if you've never had a business before or you've never had someone pay you for your service, something that you enjoy doing, the first time that someone actually pays you value for what you have to offer, you'll want to do it again and again and again, not just because of the financial benefit, but because you see that what you had to offer was valued by someone else and they appreciated it. And how do you show appreciation? By paying value. So when you are able to serve in your passion, technically you never work a day in your life because you're just doing what you enjoy, what you love, what you're gifted in, and what is likely a significant part of your purpose. And when you start to see it from that standpoint, from a higher level standpoint, you see that everything you do in your business is about serving. And when you serve with grace and honor, you receive and you're able to do more with what you receive. You're able to serve more. One of the things I ask is to be able to tithe more. How do I tithe more? By being able to earn more. And by earning more, I'm able to tithe more and thus be able to circulate. You, you know about the talents. If you hold on to it, it's not going to do anything for you or anyone else. But when you circulate it and you move it around, it's able to benefit so many more people, including you. So I just want to ask Dana to jump in for right now. Are there any questions so far or do you have any questions before I pick up again? No, I, I really appreciate um, everything you're saying and and that I think that gift whole idea of a gift you know we have all been given something our own superpower however we want to say it that we can share with other people and it's so easy to want to share it mm -hmm. and it doesn't become a gift until you do however it can also be powerful when you get people to put some skin in the game you know and actually do that I know we're going to be having a um a challenge coming up here in, in a next week it starts actually for folks that don't know how to make a lead magnet and don't have a lead magnet in their company or maybe if they do they're not working and they're not getting leads or if the leads they're getting aren't quality well we were working with a coach who told us to charge for that challenge and I think the probably the last five out of ten challenges I've been in with you know different friends around the industry, you know they've charged for their challenges. And at first I thought, well, that's weird. Challenges are supposed to be free. Well, no, not necessarily. And so I decided to have them put a little skin in the game. We're just going to have a seven dollar fee that'll kind of cover the administrative expenses and that sort of thing. But I've had some kickback from some other marketers who have said, why are you charging for your challenge? I'm like, well, because I can and because it's valuable and I want the people to recognize that it's valuable. Mm -hmm. And That's very true. Very so true. it's a beautiful thing. And I love I've you know, everything you said just totally resonated with me and that story of using Joseph. Uh, I love, 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 love it. So um, I know our folks are are going to resonate with this for sure. Great, great. Well, I want to just kind of loop back to LinkedIn and how does LinkedIn play in all of this. 90% of my business 
comes through LinkedIn. And I show people how to utilize LinkedIn, not just to make a pretty profile picture. You know, there's a lot of that already out there. And, um, you know, that's, that's all well and good. But what I really focus in on is how to utilize LinkedIn to build business relationships where you can get in contact with the people who are your ideal clients that you know you can serve, you know they're out there, you just need to be connected with them. So many people I've talked to, they don't know what to say, they don't know how to say it, they don't know how to engage, uh, and just know that it is different on LinkedIn. Not better, not worse, just different in that, let's say on Facebook, the goal is to have lots of likes and lots of no big numbers next to your name, lots of uh friends and so forth but on linkedin it's different because for me at least i say it's about quality versus quantity it's about quality versus quantity because would you rather have a thousand connections that you don't know them and they don't know you and thus you can't do anything for them and they can't do anything for you but you have a big number next to your name or would you rather have a hundred quality connections where you've taken the time to get to know them. I'm not saying over the course of five years. I'm saying have a conversation. Get to know what they do. If you could recommend them, what would you need to know to recommend them? And likewise, share about you and your business so that they can have something to go on if they were to recommend you. Again, put yourself in their shoes. Would you feel comfortable referring someone if you knew nothing of them other than the fact that you click the connect button. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So I'd rather have a hundred really connected people who at least know me a little bit. I know them a little bit. I know that they're at least interested in my world of what I do. And maybe they're not going to purchase today or tomorrow or next week, but they still have a high probability of needing what I have to offer at some point in the near future. And the fact that I've actually had a conversation with them, that puts me way above anybody else they are likely connected to that may do what I do. So when they do have that need, who are they going to think of? Who's going to be top of mind? It's going to be me because why? They've actually had a conversation with me. I have had people who have been connected to me for a long period of time. And I try to engage with them, but they never respond back. And it's not because they don't want to or they don't like to. They just don't know what to say. <laughs> and so they, they, they're they afraid of engaging and so forth. But they're watching. So when I post things, when I do various things, they're watching. Now, I can see on the back end how many people are watching, I can't necessarily say who exactly unless they actually make a comment or, or a like, but what I have seen happen over and over and over again is that when the time is right, they contact me. They reach out and they say, I've been watching you. I've been watching you and I like what you do or whatever the comment is. And that's why I'm contacting you to hire you for your service. So. It works, takes a little time, not a lot, but it's all about your transparency and being able to engage with people. So I show people how to build those business relationships so that they can turn connections into clients. And this works for whether you are a nine to five worker or an entrepreneur or anything in between, full or part time. When you can build that business relationship you will distinguish yourself from all others who do what you might do in the ballpark of what you might do. So I have a very special gift for members of your audience. If you would like to have an audit of your LinkedIn profile to give you some tips and some pointers and some strategy on how to connect with who it is that you want to connect with, whether again, you are a nine to five worker and you're looking to continue to climb that corporate ladder or that business strategy, getting to a new industry, a new business type, getting a new position, a new role, whatever that might be. Or if you are an entrepreneur, a coach, a consultant, uh, an expert, any of, of the creatives, it works for either category of professional. 
because it's really about connecting with who is it that you want to serve, whom you want to serve, I should say. Who is it that you want to serve? So I really just want to be able to be of service to your audience, Dana. And if wow. you would like to have a complimentary audit, where shall I put it? In the chat. If you can put it in the chat, otherwise we will make sure we circle back and put those in the different, uh, on the different platforms where we're viewing this. Thank you so much. That is so, so, so generous. I know that having someone take a look and just sort of give you some ideas. You don't, when we make our profiles, we don't necessarily know exactly what will attract the right people. And when you, when you let someone like Jacqueline get me in and, and tell you, you will have, walk away with some great, great pointers for how you can just tweak your, your profile just a little bit, mm -hmm. keeping, keeping the, um, your client in mind. That's, that's just, that's just and, beautiful. And understand, I don't do this as a cookie cutter. Everyone gets the same pointers. I actually have a conversation with you and try to understand what your end result is that you're trying to achieve and then backtrack and put those pieces in place that will get you the result that you're looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. I will. We'll get that link out to you. Um, I saw someone over on our Facebook page. They were wanting help with this, and they've given us a phone number, it looks like. I don't know if that's a Mexican number. I can't tell, but it looks like it has maybe too many, too many um, digits for a U.S. number, but we will, we will work that out. And... Uh, there well, are no if you, if you put in the subject line Dana's uh, gift, Dana's gift in the subject line to my email address there, support at the management academy.com. That's how I'll know that you were here with Dana. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, that that thank you so much for coming tonight, Jacqueline, and sharing with the group. And I hope this has given everybody, um, you know, insight into what that passion might be for them. You know, I loved your example of the dance group, the ministry, um, but we all have those gold mines inside and that's something else that david and i do too is to help people uncover what those are mm -hmm. you know maybe they've started a business and but that's not in their passion and they wonder what's why it's not working mm -hmm. um, but finding your passion and igniting that and figuring out how you can make money doing it that i think we're both in the same the same boat there and uh, really like to serve in that way Absolutely. Can I bring up one more point? Yeah, certainly. Understand that your passions can change over time because you change over time. So if you say, well, I was passionate about this and maybe I'm not so passionate about it anymore. Is, is that wrong? Should I still go after that one thing? And your passions do change as you change over time because who you can serve is going to be different over your lifetime because of your experiences. So, for example, my, my early career, I served youth and families, youth and teenagers, and then it became more so the adults because the adults take care of the family. So, you know, the, it changes as you change because what you're able to give changes over time as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good point. Good point. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we are going to call this a wrap. Everybody have a wonderful rest of the day. And as I usually say, as we close this up, be safe, be blessed, and be well. Until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs>